when it comes to testing for inorganic ions. So our little test tube tests that we do for the presence of uh, inorganic ions, it can be very confusing. It seems like there's a lot of information to take in. Now, right now, this table probably doesn't look like it's gonna help you at all because it looks like massive and confusing, but hopefully by the time we fill this out, it's a one-stop shop for you to reference. And as you reference, you're gonna end up not having to look at this anymore. Hopefully that's the plan anyway. So this would be something good to maybe stick in the back of your folder while you're in school or college and reference it for all your different inorganic tests. So what I've got along the top here is of course, uh, or are of course, our anions, okay? So hydroxide, sulfate, carbonate, nitrate, and our halide ions over here. On the left-hand side, I'm gonna be looking at the common cations. So our positive ions on the left-hand side, I'm gonna cross-reference these and see whether we get precipitates or whether they're soluble or insoluble and so on and so forth. So we're gonna start with group one. Group one, is nice and easy. And it's the easiest one to remember of all of them because you know what? They're all soluble. You are never going to get a precipitate of sodium something, potassium something, okay? So anything in group one, you're not gonna get a precipitate. So sodium hydroxide, potassium carbonate, lithium chloride, doesn't matter. They're all soluble. So if you're ever looking to combine a group one ion with something, it's never going to give you a precipitate. Group two, unfortunately, is a very different story. We need to look at these individually because there are trends in solubility within group two for these different anions, okay? So from beryllium down to and including barium. So let's have a look at hydroxide first. When it comes to hydroxides, group two hydroxides, they are insoluble at the top of group two and they are soluble at the bottom of group two. So solubility increases down the group. So for example, beryllium hydroxide, well, that's gonna be a solid, that's gonna be a white precipitate. All of these are white precipitates. You don't need to worry about color. So magnesium hydroxide as well, that's pretty insoluble. So you may get a solid of magnesium hydroxide there, but the calcium, strontium, barium, they tend to be soluble, so they're gonna end up as aqueous. What I always say is the solubility of hydroxides in group two gets higher. So hydroxides higher as you go down group two in terms of solubility. When it comes to group two sulfates, the opposite is true. The ones at the top are very soluble. So like beryllium and magnesium sulfates, they tend to be very soluble. Whereas at the bottom, they're insoluble. Okay, so strontium sulfate, barium sulfate, they're insoluble, very insoluble. So this time, okay, the solubility of group two sulfates as you go down the group gets smaller. Okay, so sulfates smaller in terms of solubility. Okay, so two down, hydroxides higher, sulfates smaller. One last thing I wanna mention here when we're looking at sulfates. There's a test here, I'm gonna put official tests in red. The test for a sulfate ion or the presence of sulfate ions in solution is acidified barium solution. So it could be acidified barium chloride. Now what we get here is a thick white precipitate of BASO4, barium sulfate, okay? And that's a really, really common test. So if you wanna test for the presence of sulfate ions, use acidified barium chloride. The barium ions will make an insoluble salt, a precipitate with the sulfate, and you get that thick white precipitate there. The same is true, okay, the other way around. If you wanna test for the presence of barium ions, you can put some sulfate ions in there, okay? So you can put some sulfate ions and test for barium ions. So they do test for each other. Why is it acidified? Well, just in case there's a carbonate present or something like that, then the acid gets rid of the carbonate, okay? Therefore, you know, eliminates any issues or can cross contamination, okay? So that's why we use acidified barium to get rid of any carbonate that might be present. Speaking of carbonates, they're up next. Nice and easy. Group two carbonates are all insoluble. You are definitely gonna get a white precipitate with any group two ion and a carbonate ion, okay? So beryllium carbonate down to barium carbonate, they're all white precipitates. What we say here is, that in terms of group two, carbonate can't dissolve, okay? So just a bit of alliteration to help you remember, when it comes to group two, hydroxides higher in terms of solubility, sulfates smaller in terms of solubility, carbonates can't, they can't dissolve, okay? So that's the way I remember it always. I like nitrates, nitrates are easy. They're all soluble. So it could be group one, it could be group two, it could be anything in the periodic table. If it's a nitrate, it's soluble. So like group one, 
if it's something nitrate, it's not going to be a precipitate. It's always going to be in solution, okay? So all our group two nitrates, like our group one nitrates, are soluble. And again, nice and easy, group two halides, so beryllium chloride, calcium bromide, barium iodide, whatever combination you want, they're going to be soluble. So no precipitates to be seen there, okay? So none at all. So when it comes to group two, you are gonna get various precipitates, okay? So higher group two hydroxides, you're gonna get a precipitate. Lower group two sulfates, you're gonna get a precipitate. All of them give a precipitate with uh, carbonate, but anything else, nitrates or halide ions, no precipitate, they're all soluble. Next up in terms of our cations, we're gonna look at silver, Ag plus Aq. Now that usually comes in the form of silver nitrate, okay? So AgNO3, aqueous. Now, when we combine these with these different anions, we are going to get different results. Silver is a funny one that we do need to know about. The main reason we need to know about silver is for our halide ions, but we'll go through the others as well. If we put hydroxide ions anywhere near silver ions, then we're going to get a poo brown precipitate. And that poo brown precipitate is AgOH solid, silver hydroxide. Now, this usually appears or can appear when testing for our halide ions, okay, when doing organic chemistry further down the line. So just be aware of that. Silver hydroxide is a brown precipitate. Next up, silver sulfate. That's just a white precipitate, okay? So you are gonna get a precipitate if silver ions and sulfate ions are in the same test tube together. So Ag2SO4 is the formula for that white precipitate. Likewise, for our carbonate ions, okay? So you're gonna get a silver carbonate white precipitate here, Ag2CO3. So, so far, silver's making precipitates with pretty much everything. The only thing it doesn't make a precipitate with is our nitrate. Silver nitrate is of course soluble. Why? Because the solution of silver ions that we use is always silver nitrate. There's not many soluble silver salts, okay? So silver nitrate is the one we use. So of course, if you put silver nitrate with another nitrate, then nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna see any precipitate there at all. This is where we've been looking to get to with our silver ions. It's all about halide ions, silver nitrate and our halide ions. There are official tests for the halide ions, okay? So what are we gonna get when we combine silver ions with halide ions? Well, what we're gonna get is silver chloride is a white precipitate of AgCl solid. Silver bromide is a cream precipitate of AgBr solid, and silver iodide is a yellow precipitate of AgI solid, okay? So know what those precipitates are and know the colors of them. So these are all official tests. So adding silver nitrate to these solutions is the official test for a halide ion, so X minus AQ, white precipitate, cream precipitate, yellow precipitate. But the thing is, unless you've got them sat next to each other, it's actually quite difficult to tell the difference between uh, white and cream, cream, and to be fair, it's a really pale yellow. So how do we actually tell the difference? Well, this is a secondary test and hence the dotted lines underneath because once we've done that with our halide ions, we then can test further just to confirm that it's silver chloride or silver bromide or silver iodide that we've got. The two things we can do, once we form the precipitate, so we do need to add silver nitrate first. Once we've got our precipitates, then we can further confirm by adding either dilute ammonia aqueous, NH3 aqueous, or conch ammonia aqueous, one of the two. Now what happens if we add dilute NH3 to those three precipitates we've got over on the right there? If it's silver chloride that you've got and you add some dilute ammonia aqueous to it, then it's gonna re-dissolve that precipitate. So if you, if you can't tell, oh, is it white or is it cream? I don't know whether it's silver chloride or silver bromide, then add some dilute NH3. It's gonna re-dissolve it if it's silver chloride. It won't re-dissolve it if it's silver bromide or indeed silver iodide. Now, if you use concentrated uh, aqueous ammonia, then that's gonna dissolve our AgCl as well. It's also gonna dissolve your silver bromide solid too, but it will not dissolve your silver iodide, okay? So it's really important you choose which aqueous ammonia you use depending on which of those different precipitates you think you've got. 
So let's say, for example, you can't tell whether it's white or cream, whether it's silver chloride or silver bromide. You, if you added conch NH3, they're both going to re-dissolve and you're none the wiser. So here, comparing these two, you need to actually add dilute NH3 and that will dissociate between the two. If you can't decide between these two, the AGBR and the AGI, then add conch NH3, the AGBR will dissolve and the AGI won't. Okay, so using one of these two to dissociate between these is really important. Choose that wisely. Now, speaking of ammonia, the last cation we need to deal with is our ammonium ion, ammonium ion. Now, this with the hydroxide ion, this is actually an official test. Test for ammonium ions, you warm with sodium hydroxide. So if you think you've got ammonium ions in a solution, you warm it with sodium hydroxide. What happens is NH3, ammonia, is released as a gas. So what we need to do is get some damp red litmus, hook that over the top of the test tube that you're warming it in a water bath with. If any ammonia is released, it's going to turn that damp red litmus to blue, okay? So that's our official test for a solution that you think contains ammonium ions. The rest of these, ammonium sulfate, ammonium carbonate, ammonium nitrate, they're all soluble. Okay, all soluble. You're not going to get a precipitate in any of those. Also, I should just say, you know, with our silver hydroxide, silver sulfate and silver carbonate, you're not going to get any reaction there either. You're not going to get any, you know, dissolving of those with uh, by adding ammonia in any way. Okay, so I've rambled a bit there and I've gone back and forth a little bit, but you can see how we can, you know, we can basically bring all of these together on one page. Our official tests are few and far between. There's only really three on here, okay? So SO42 minus, we can test for that using barium ions. Acidified barium chloride will do it. Official test for our halide ions, well that's silver nitrate. Secondary test, confirmatory test, using dilute or concentrated ammonia, depending on which one you think you've got. And then NH4 plus to test for that, you heat with uh, sodium hydroxide. We release NH3 and damp red litmus turns uh, from red to blue. But when it comes to combining things, when it comes to combining different solutions, you've got to know your solubility rules. You've got to know what's going to give you a precipitate and what's not going to give you a precipitate, which is why I've taught you about, you know, the group two ones and the silver ones in terms of hydroxides, sulfates and carbonates. All right. So if you remember all group one, all nitrates, all soluble. Okay. And then remember your rules for group two and of course those precipitates for silver as well, and you can't go wrong. So that is my summary in terms of testing for inorganic ions, not including any transition metals.